Hello and welcome to Bottle Ship with our friends the Jifflings. If you enjoy the show, please leave a review and share the podcast with your friends. And stay tuned to the end of the show when the Jifflings will read out some of your reviews. And now it's time for today's special Valentine's episode, The Cookie Cutter. In your world, things are important. But what about the things that aren't important anymore? Well, sometimes those things end up here in the magical land of Dilstonia, where the Jifflings live on their little Jiffling ship. They find these things that we throw away and fish them out of their sea so they can recycle them and put them to good use once again. And here they are now, ready to work. Eccentric young pumpkin. I'm ever so excited. The hedge, who was a very lazy jiffling. Like, hey man, is it time for a bed yet? Miss Katie, who loves fixing things and dressy up. Sometimes I like both together. Albert, the ship's gardener. Hey, who's been in a me cabbage patch like? And Friedeline, a very sensible jiffling who looks after everybody on the ship. Yeah, that is correct. Oh. Today on the ship, all the jifflings are celebrating Valentine's Day, which is a very special day oh. when the gifs like to show how much they care about each other. <sighs> which is ever such a lot. Ooh, as much as a spaceship. Even though Valentine's Day happens in February, today was surprisingly warm. So all the Jifflings decided to eat their Valentine's breakfast outside at the front of the ship. I like Valentine's breakfast. It tastes all toasty and warm, like a hot cloud. Aye, that's because it reminds us of how much we care for each other. And because we're having nice toasty crumpets. Albert smiled and passed everybody a delicious heart-shaped crumpet. But as they all tucked in, he noticed there was one Jif missing. Miss Kitty, don't let your breakfast get cold. You go ahead, Albert. I'm just getting the, um, Jiffling jam. Well, Albert thought it was more polite to wait until all the Jifs were at the table. But he supposed Miss Katie was only getting jam, so she wouldn't be that long. So, young pumpkin, why don't you open your homemade Valentine's Day card? Ooh, I'd like to. I'm ever so excited. Ooh, ooh, it's a picture of a racing car. And it says, we love young pumpkin because he's always racing around. Thank you. Then Young Pumpkin handed Friedeline her special card. Oh, it is the picture of the calculator. And it says, we love Friedeline because we can always count on her. Ha! The top comedy. Everyone smiled. But then Hedge spoke up. Or rather, he mumbled up through mouthfuls of crumpet. Mm, like, we still need to, um... Give Miss Katie her card, man. Oh yes, Miss Katie was taking ever such a long time. So all the gifs scampered over to the kitchen. But when they got there, Miss Katie didn't seem to be looking for jam at all. Instead, there she was in her special Valentine's dress, looking ever so flustered. In front of her was a humongous mountain of Valentine's ice cream pudding, which she was wafting with a great big fan. I wanted to show you just exactly how much I love you all. So I made this mega normal size pudding, but it's filled with ice cream. So if I don't keep cooling it with my fan, I'm afraid it's going to melt. Well, ice cream is delicious, Miss Katie, but we would rather spend time with you instead. Like maybe we can spend time with Miss Katie and the colossal Pudding present man. Oh, greedy hedge. But I haven't made any cards. So if I don't give you something extra special now, how will you know that I care? Well, Jess, that sound means an object which has been lost or thrown away on Earth has got caught in your net. You'll have to put Miss Katie's dessert in the fridge for now and all heave the object in together. 
<sighs> the object landed on the deck with a splickety splock. It was tinny, with tall sides shaped like a heart and a hollow middle. Young Pumpkin was first to guess what the object was. Ooh, I think this is a guinea pig's garden fence that he can pop his little head over and say, Meep! Well, that's extremely imaginative, Pumpkin. But then Albert stepped forward, hey. for he knew exactly what the object was. He hopped up hey. onto the story seat, and then he began his tale. This is the Froggy's Cookie Cutter. Ribbit. And my old carpenter, Daniel Woodcraft, hey. told me all about it. Once there was a magical land where pixies oh. and dragons oh. and unicorns oh. all lived together. And everyone was best of friends. <laughs> Every day they would say the kindest things to each other, like, Oh, Mrs. Dragon, I just want to say I think you're fantastic. Oh gosh, Professor Unicorn, how lovely. So everyone in the land was very happy. Well, all except for one little frog called Colin. Oh. Colin thought that just telling his friends he cared about them wasn't quite enough. Oh. He wanted to show them, hey. so he would spend all his time in his little frog's bungalow, baking oh, cookies hey. for everyone with his hey. special heart-shaped cookie cutter. Well, that's one heart-shaped cookie for Penelope Pixie, uh -huh. said Colin, and one for Alan Badger, Whoa. and one for Queen Annabelle, uh -huh. the Queen. And on and on he would be, long into the night. And when he finally finished, he was so tired, he barely had the energy to hand his cookies out. <sighs> That's uh, one special for... Uh... <sighs> then Colin the Frog would fall fast asleep. And so he hardly ever saw his friends at all. Well... One day, Queen Annabelle, yeah. the Queen, threw a big birthday party at her palace. Yeah. But when Colin got his invitation, instead of being excited, he just dived Ooh. straight into his kitchen oh, and began frantically baking mountains of heart-shaped cookies to give to the Queen. And even when the party had started, he still didn't think he'd baked enough. But then, as he worked, there was a knock at his door. Oh! Well, I'll be a rosy box of ribbits, cried Colin, because standing there, right in front of him, in all her majestic queenery, was his friend, Queen Annabelle. Yeah. The Queen? Oh, Colin, why aren't you hipping and hopping like you just won't stop down at my party? Oh, we all miss you. You simply must come. Oh, I'd love to be getting froggy with it, your majesty. Ribbit. But, well, I just haven't baked you enough cookies yet, said Colin, surrounded by cookies. Then the queen smiled. Oh, little froggy. To me, all the cookies in the world don't matter as much as one single Colin. All I want for my birthday is you. And so the Queen took Colin by his little froggy arm and together they went off and had great fun at the party. And later, when he got home, Colin threw away his cookie cutter because now he'd realised that although presents were nice, they weren't as important as just spending time with his friends. Ribbit. And now, the Froggy's cookie cutter is here. But what will we Jifflings do with it? That's a good question, Pumpkin. Maybe it could be like a sandcastle builder, man. So we can build cookie-shaped sandcastles. But then Miss Katie stepped forwards. Why don't we fill the cookie cutter with water and it can be a lovely Jifflings paddling pool? That way, we can all cool off and spend the day together, which is the best way to show we care about each other the most. Yeah! Oh yes, Miss Katie, that does sound wonderful. 
And so, the Jifflings filled up their special new paddling pool with water and had a marvellous time together. Especially when Miss Katie saw her Valentine's card, which had a big picture of a rainbow on it. And it says, the Jifflings love me because I'm so colourful and I brighten up their day. And after a lovely cooling afternoon, the Jifflings all dried off and jambled inside. And then they found it seemed rather late. So it must be time for bed. Like, what about the ice cream, man? Oh, Hedge. Good night, young pumpkin. Good night. Good night, Albert. I'll see you in the morning, Lake. Good night, Friedeline. And it is a good night. Yeah. Good night, Miss Katie. Night, night. Good night, Hedge. Hedge? Oh, I think the head is asleep already. And goodbye to you too, wherever you are. Maybe next time you see a thing that you might throw away, you'll stop and see if you can use it again, just like our friends the Jifflings. And maybe the thing you use again will have a story to tell too. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to Bottle Ship. We'll have a new episode up every two weeks. For all the parents listening, if you'd like to, you can donate to the show at patreon.com forward slash bottleship. And for all the children listening, if you enjoyed the show, please leave a review and share the podcast with your friends. We've had some lovely reviews this week, haven't we, Jifflings? That's right, like this one from America. It says, Hi, my name is Jasper from Pittsburgh, USA, and I am six. My favourite character is Miss Katie, because I like dressing up too. Oh, thank you very much, Jasper. What a perfect review. Like, yeah, man. And we have this one from Canada. It says, Hi, Jifflings. My name is Mira, and I am three years old. Almost four. I am from Calgary, Canada, but I just moved to Vancouver Island. I do miss my old home, but your stories make moving easier because I can listen to the Jifflings anywhere. My favorite Jiffling is Hedge. I pretend to talk just like him, which is so funny. Man. Oh, well, thank you, Mira. You know, moving house is never an easy thing to do, not even for the big people. But it does not have to be the bad thing either. Aye, that's right, Mira. Moving house can bring lots of exciting new adventures too. And even though things might seem a bit scary at first, after a while the scary bits go away and then you'll feel right at home. But just in case, us Jifflings will always be there to make you smile. And smiling will always make you feel better. Unless you're like hungry man. And then you need a smile made of sandwiches. Oh, greedy hedge. Well, Pumpkin certainly is right. Smiling will always make you feel better. So thank you to everyone who wrote to us or left a review. Hearing from you always makes us smile. And if you'd like to send us an email, you can send it to thejifflings at gmail.com. We really would love to hear from you. And if you like listening to stories... Why not check out our sister podcast, Storytime, for children of all ages. Thanks again, and we'll bring you more exciting adventures with our friends the Jifflings very soon. Goodbye.